Today we'll be talking about the permanent maxillary canines. The maxillary canine is the third tooth from the midline in the maxillary arch. This is the maxillary right canine and this is the maxillary left canine. According to the universal numbering system, this is tooth number 6 and this is tooth number 11. The labial aspect is convex in all directions. This convexity is more pronounced mesiodistally. The mesioncisal angle is rounded while the distal incisal angle is even more rounded. The distal margin is shorter than the mesial margin. The presence of this cusp tip divides the incisal margin into two components, the mesioncisal slope and the distal incisal slope. Before attrition, the mesioncisal slope is shorter than the distal incisal slope and after attrition, the mesioncisal slope lengthens while the distal incisal slope shortens. The cervical margin curves evenly towards the root apex. A labial ridge transcends incisor cervically and it basically represents the greater development of the middle labial lobe when compared with the mesial and distal labial lobes. In the incisal third, the mesiolabial and distolabial developmental depressions are also present, while imbrication lines are present in the cervical third. Mammalons are usually absent and the height of contour is located in the cervical third. Coming to the lingual aspect, the mesial, distal and incisal margins are the same as the labial aspect. The cervical margin curves towards the distal side. The cingulum is bulky and normally smooth. It shows greater development than the cingulum of the maxillary central incisor. The marginal ridges are also prominent. A lingual ridge transcends incisor gingivally, which results in the formation of mesiolingual and distolingual fossa. On rare occasions, a lingual gingival groove may be present, which separates the cingulum from the incisal half. This groove may also have a lingual pit. The lingual height of contour is located in the cervical third. The mesial aspect is triangular in shape and it is convex in all directions. It is wider labiolingually when compared with the incisors. The cervical margin curves evenly towards the incisal surface. The labial margin is convex incisor cervically, while the lingual margin is concave in the incisal third and convex in the cervical third. The incisal edge is thick and curves from the labial surface towards the lingual surface. The contact area is ovoid in shape and it is located at the junction of the middle and incisal thirds. The height of contour is also located at the junction of the incisal and middle thirds. The distal aspect is similar to the mesial aspect with the following exceptions. It is usually smaller than the mesial aspect. The cervical margin is less curved towards the incisal surface. The contact area is more circular and it is located in the middle third. The height of contour is also located in the middle third. From the incisal aspect, the crown has a diamond-shaped outline. It is wider labiolingually when compared with the maxillary incisors. The mesial portion is thicker and more convex when compared with the distal portion. The cingulum is towards the distal side. The root is single and has a sharp apex. It is also the longest root of any tooth in the mouth. The root is wider labiolingually than it is mesiodistally. Also, the labial and lingual surfaces are convex, while the mesial and distal surfaces are either convex or slightly flattened. The mid-root cross-section shows that the root is wider labiolingually than it is mesiodistally. Also, the root is wider mesiodistally towards the labial surface and narrower towards the lingual surface. Coming to the variations and anomalies, the sharpness of the cusp tip varies. On rare occasions, a tubercle is found on the lingual surface. The root shows several curvatures along its length. If this curvature is present in the apical third, then it shows a distal deflection. Since the maxillary canine normally erupts after the maxillary premolars, its space is sometimes partially closed. It may then erupt labially or lingually when compared with the other teeth or it might not erupt at all. In this case, it is considered to be impacted. 